The law of quadratic reciprocity is a fascinating theorem that can be discovered by looking at the values of q on p when p and q are primes. Before looking at the details of the statement and its proof, we're going to take a look at the pattern itself. Here's a chart of the values of the Legendre symbol q on p where p and q are primes. In order to make this a little more visually appealing, we will color the plus one values green and the minus one values red. You can see that the chart is almost symmetric across the diagonal, but not quite. For example, if we look at the row and column corresponding to the value 5, we can see they match up perfectly. But if we look at 7, we see that it only matches sometimes. In order to try to understand this, let's see what happens when we only highlight the positions that fail to be symmetric. This coloration makes it possible to see the pattern. If we look at only the primes associated with these rows and these columns, a very strong pattern appears. The only time the chart fails to have symmetry is when both p and q are congruent to 3 modulo 4, and this leads us to the insight into the statement of quadratic reciprocity. Of course, the observation of the pattern and the proof are two separate steps, but before we can get into the details of the proof, we need to set up a few preliminaries. Definition. If n is any integer, then the least residue of n modulo m is the integer x in the interval negative m over 2 to m over 2, such that n is congruent to x modulo m. We denote the least residue of n modulo m by lr sub m of n. This chart shows the list of complete residues modulo m for a few values of m. As you can see, the end result of using these values instead of the standard zm values is that all the numbers are as small as possible in absolute value. It will turn out that we are primarily interested in the signs of these values. Definition. For any real number x, we define the sign of x to be 1 if x is greater than 0, 0 if x is 0, and negative 1 if x is less than 0. The book calls this the signum of x, but basically everyone just calls it the sine of x. Just as a quick observation, notice that x is equal to the absolute value of x times the sine of x for any real number x. Before looking at the formal proof of Gauss's lemma, we're going to look at a numerical example of the idea. Gauss's lemma basically takes the first p minus 1 over 2 multiples of some integer m, reduces them to the least residues, and then counts the number of negative signs. For example, let m equal 4 and p equal 11. Here are the first five multiples of 4. We now want to reduce this module 11 using the least residues as the representations. Notice that by doing this, we ended up with all the numbers from 1 through 5, just in a different order and possibly with a negative sign. Gauss's lemma counts up the negative signs and uses that value to determine the Legendre symbol. The proof from here looks a lot like the proof of Fermat's little theorem in that we're going to multiply the list of values together in two different ways. If we multiply the original list together, we get this. If we multiply the list of least residues together, we get this. Since both of these are the same list module 11, we must have these two expressions are equivalent. We can then cancel out the 5 factorial and apply Euler's criterion to the left hand side. Of course, we can see that 4 is a quadratic residue module 11 since 2 squared equals 4, but that's not the point. The method demonstrated above works in general. Theorem. Let the g's d of m and p equal 1, where p is an odd prime, and let mu be the number of integers in the set m, 2m, up to p minus 1 over 2 times m, whose least residues modulo p are negative. Then m on p is equal to negative 1 to the mu power. The first observation we need to make is that all of the least residues in the list of multiples of m are different. Suppose that a times m is congruent to plus or minus b times m modulo p, where a and b are between 1 and p minus 1 over 2. Then since the GCD of m and p is 1, we have that a is congruent to plus or minus b mod p. But since a and b are both positive and less than p minus 1 over 2, they must actually be equal. Therefore, this list reduces to the following collection of least residues. We don't know exactly which values have a negative sign, but we do know that there are mu of them. We now multiply the multiples of m together, and we multiply the list of least residues together. These are equivalent to each other modulo p. We can divide out the p minus 1 over 2 factorial from both sides and apply Euler's criterion to conclude the desired result. We can actually convert the equivalence to an equal sign because the actual value of both expressions is plus or minus 1. In the next video, we will see how to use this observation to prove quadratic reciprocity. Thank you for watching this video. I'm currently dabbling with the idea of creating more videos like these for my classes, and I welcome constructive comments that might help me make better videos in the future.